Denise Bernadette Miranda. I'll be your host tonight. And we are speaking with Brian Biot, if I didn't murder that, and Jen Schmaro from Action Energy. And today we're going to talk about uh, funding for action. Well, let's start actually with what action is. Um, could you please describe for me what your positions are at Action, what those services are um, that you provide the community, what the community is, that kind of thing? Sure. Brian? Uh, so my name is Brian Biot. I am the Director of Energy Efficiency Operations at Action. Uh, we oversee the uh, weatherization program. We're the lead vendor in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for National Grid. Uh, we oversee or contract with 20 agencies throughout the Commonwealth to implement the low income single family program, which is one to four units. And we contract with three other agencies to oversee the low income multifamily program, which is five plus units. And we, uh, we have an annual budget, roughly 50 plus million dollars, that we implement throughout the state and to serve. Uh, approximately 20,000 households a year. That's incredible. And Jen? I'm Jen Shamar. I'm the Utilities Advocate at Action Energy, and we are the LIHEAP program, which is the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, or otherwise known as Fuel Assistance. So we provide uh, a monetary benefit towards a client's heating costs during the winter, and then we also have um, notification to National Grid for income eligible clients for the discount rates. And uh, I provide the advocacy, which would be helping clients if they have any issues or any um, appeals that they're doing with our utilities that we serve. And we assist households in applying for the Salvation Army Good Neighbor Fund, which uh, households that are eligible for fuel assistance are 60% and under of state median income. If a family falls within 60 to 80% of state median income, the Salvation Army Good Neighbor Fund gives them a one-time grant towards their heating bill for the season. So even if they're not eligible for our programs, they do receive that. I should also mention that we leverage with the Department of Energy, the uh, Weatherization Assistance Program, to, uh, to, to get federal funding also that we use to, to weatherize homes. All right, great. And as far as the weatherization side, I read something about HeartWAP. HeartWAP, yes. Yes. So the uh, heating system is the heart of the home. That's where the, the H comes from. So Heating Weatherization Assistance Program. Uh, we have federal funding as well as utility funding to repair and replace and clean and tune uh, heating systems and domestic hot water systems. Great. and. So you provide services to the entire state, correct? Action is responsible for overseeing services in national grid territory to the entire state. Uh, Action, just our agency, oversees weatherization services for Greater Cape Ban and for the Eastern Merrimack Valley. And that goes for your side as well? For Actually, no, no, it doesn't for us. So we do uh, Cape Ambien. Rockport, Gloucester, uh, Essex, Manchester by the Sea. We do Hamilton and Wenham. Okay. So it's a little different with us. But. Okay. And could you um, could you tell me a little bit about um, maybe the number of households or so that you provide services to um, within Cape Ann? Would you have would roughly? Uh, right now, we're sitting at about 2,000 households as of this time in the program for this season, this year. And is that roughly, I mean, the same for the weatherization side? More or less. We don't touch quite as many households because the, the, the physical number of households we can serve, it varies. It varies from year to year. Okay. And uh, I heard the criteria um, a little bit about... Um, that that piece of it on your side would the same it would be the same for your side or is it different as the, far as the percentage to median income eligibility income is the same it is the same okay mm -hmm. and would you say over the last five years have you noticed anything is um, like trending up like more more people signing up for your service or would you say that it's the same or do you notice any trends 
I haven't noticed a particular trend. Um, we stay busy year round. Um, so uh, in years past, we may have had a lull in, in times where we were doing services, and uh, we have not experienced that in maybe like the past two or three years. For what that's worth, that's a that's a that's a busy trend. So I would say that we're we're serving at least the same amount of clients, if not more clients, on a yearly basis. Okay, um, and with that, uh, and would that be the same for this side as well? Do you find that you have more people signing up for fuel assistance, or do you think that it's about the same, less? Uh, it, it bases on a couple of things. Like when we have uh, a bad economy, of course we see uh, an uprise of people applying, more younger families. Um, the most recent years with the baby boomers starting to retire, we're seeing more seniors coming into the program. So in, and then depending on the winter weather, how they'll be able to succeed or not succeed in paying the bills, people that otherwise wouldn't will come in if it's a very bad winter. So kind yeah. of ebbs and flows. So with, all right, say if, if you're a family versus a person, would the, elig the eligibility would be different, correct, as far as? that like you're if you're a single person you have one income if you're a family mm -hmm. would that would that be a different or does the equation work no matter where you are is it like people money equals so it's based on the size of the household it is and in, in the statement so if you had two people in the household this year it was forty four thousand mm -hmm. nine hundred fifty eight dollar gross annual income would qualify you oh that's for two people and the four people it would be sixty six thousand one hundred and fifteen dollars that's the sixty percent median okay that and information can be found on our website too mm -hmm. lovely which is www.actioninc.org lovely that's that's actually a really good um, source for information uh, let's see so could you talk me through the process well before before we go there would you encourage if somebody were to come into your to your building and say I need help would you encourage that person to sign up for as many services as possible would you encourage them to sign up for one or the other, or how, how, would, how would that go? And could you walk me through the process on both sides? Um, so for the, the fuel assistance side, when someone comes in, it's uh, mostly due because they're concerned about the monetary value of their bills, so they want help with that. Mm -hmm. But when they do come in to us, uh, we do want to give them all available opportunities for energy efficiency. So even if they're not sure if they are eligible, let's say they might think they're above the 60%, we always encourage people to apply. There's always available programs that are opening to them and we never discourage anybody from contacting us with questions or to apply. And the basic process is our season, we open November 1st and we end April 30th unless there's an extension. So we uh, have the person come in and they would call us to book an appointment or well, we do take an emergency walk-in, and the staff just has a conversation with that person to determine what type of paperwork they'll need to provide. Mm -hmm. And once that paperwork is all provided, a certifier will review their file and deem them eligible or ineligible. And then we take it from there with the person as to the conversation of, oh, you were denied, but here's other options, or you're eligible, and here's your options. But we always educate them at our initial intake in the office and give them information about our energy efficiency programs and you know we are in the same building so we have a great communication and relationship if there's a client that we feel is in need and you know to see make sure they get the services they need but we always encourage people to take any opportunity possible for themselves sure and we found that even if a person doesn't think that or thinks that their home is in it is efficient or if they don't need the services if, if one of our specialists goes out to take a look around, we can almost always find something we can do to improve the health and safety of the condition of the home to knock down the utility bills a bit. So tell me about weatherization. Um, you go into a home and, and what happens? Are you looking at light bulbs? <clears throat> or are you looking at, is a refrigerator near the stove? Sure. 
Sure. Um, so uh, one of our specialists will, will conduct a home energy assessment. Um, they'll go in and it's a, a top to bottom assessment. So um, we have a program called the Appliance Management Program. Well, they will monitor the refrigerator and uh, a primary standalone freezer. If they're deemed to be energy inefficient, we can replace those for no cost. We can also replace window air conditioners and dehumidifiers. Um, they'll go throughout the home, interior and exterior, and replace any kind of lighting uh, that we have, in incandescent or failing CFL lighting with new LED lighting, <coughs> um, and also provide the client with some, some education about uh, money-saving tips that they can do to just kind of pass the things around the house that they can do to save a buck on, on the utility bill. Um, they'll also assess the entire building shell from top to bottom, um, from the basement all the way up to the attic to assess it for insulation and air sealing factors. Um, we may conduct some, some diagnostic testing with blower door or duct blaster um, to measure air leakage in the house. Uh, we'll scan the walls with an infrared camera to check for insulation factors and look for moisture issues. Um, once that's done, we can write up a scope of work that we'll hand out to a contractor that will come do that work for you at no cost. Uh, during the home energy assessment, we'll also conduct diagnostic testing on any combustion equipment that's there. So if you have a gas stove, your domestic hot water, uh, your furnace or your boiler, all that gets tested for efficiency and for health and safety. If anything's found to be inefficient or in a dangerous state, we can also replace that for no cost. Wow, that's incredible. I didn't realize that um, you really you really go deep into those homes. Absolutely. That's amazing. So, and that is whether you own a home or you rent, correct? That is correct, yes. And it's based on the person living in the quarters, not, if, so if it's a rental, it's not based on the landlord, but the renter. That's correct. Interesting. Okay, so let me ask you, is it possible for someone to come in and qualify for one side of service but not the other? To, well, if anyone qualifies for a discount utility rate or for fuel assistance, they automatically qualify for our programs. Okay. Yes. Okay. And it would probably be the same going the other way, most yes, it, likely? Yes, it's, it's reciprocal, yeah? yes. Okay. Absolutely. And what... Uh, this is probably more for you, Jen. Mm -hmm. What would what would be about the average benefit that uh, a subscriber to um, your service? What what would that be about, or does that would it range from house to apartment or? Correct. So it ranges by um, the family's income, the household's income, mm -hmm. and the type of heating they have, and whether they have. Um, uh, an energy inefficient system, so they have a higher heat burden, um, so they could get a higher benefit if, if they have that, there's an extra stipend. The average across the board though is about $800 for the winter heating season, and we do cover deliverables, so oil, propane, then the utilities, and then uh, folks that have condos and condo fees, if it's included in that, or heat included in rent, so we do the whole gambit of heat sources also. Wow, so that, that's, that's amazing. So it would make sense then for someone who questioned whether or not they would be eligible for something like this to actually physically walk in and sign themselves up for not just the heating assistance, but also for the weatherization yes. because mm -hmm. their benefit would last longer. Yes, Yeah. stretches the dollar. Yeah, absolutely. That that's something, you know. I mean, in today's today's times, I mean, I look at this winter and how crazy, how crazy was that? Like there yeah. was that cold snap in January and I bet that that month alone could have taken a significant amount of funding from mm -hmm. someone's, you know, the benefit they right. receive and so like I mentioned, the average is $800. For that one month, we saw electric bills of 6 to 900 that one month because it was so bad. So so that could have been it, their whole... It could have eaten it in that one month, yeah. So and what happens, what happens at that point when, when you're, you know, your client has run through the, the benefit amount, is that it, is there, there, there's nowhere to go from there? Or, I mean, I think, I think I read someplace that they were 
um, looking for further funding. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it w maybe it was Governor Baker. I'm not quite sure. Yes. But they were they were <coughs> asking Governor Baker for extra funding because the winter was so brutal. Mm -hmm. um, does that ever come to fruition? Do you do you ever find extra funds? It, it does sometimes. In, in previous years, the Commonwealth has provided funding to us. This year, so far, it's just been HHS money that mm. we've had. Um, but a lot of times in the past, come this time of year into April, we do get an extra stipend for everybody. We are uncertain if that will happen. The good part about being on the income eligible discount rate is uh, there are protections in place for people. So the utilities, if you, if you have electric in your home, it's still triggering your deliverable fuels so they can't shut you off. You get a winter protection. It's called the winter momentorium. So people are able to get by. I always encourage them to just pay what you can. Even it's a little bit, just try to keep sure. up with it. Um, that's when the advocacy side kind of comes, kicks in. Uh, so the winter momentorium for this year ends April 1st. So now is where we're really going to see the impact of the past winter to see where people have fallen into, you know, the criteria of the bills. And there's average management programs and different things available once you have that discount rate with um, National Grid is the folks that we work with, the utility. But so there's a little bit to at least you won't be freezing in the winter, but then you have to face it spring into summer. So. Okay, so let yeah. me ask you, what happens? What happens come April 1st when, uh, although I assume it, I assume that you're paying the utilities over the months, correct? So April 1st rolls around and I'm going to, I'm going to base it on this winter because like I said, it was, the weather was just mm -hmm. insane. So all winter long was pretty cold. We had a number of crazy storms. What are they called? Cyclo bombs? Yeah. Thunder <laughs> snow. Yeah. Right? Thunder <laughs> snow. All yeah. sorts of, right. So people use a lot of, a lot of the benefit in the first couple of months. You get to April 1st, you've run out of benefit from action, say in February, you weren't able to pay anything towards your bill in March, now April rolls around. Are they, fr is, I mean, I'm sh is, is the um, utility companies, are they forgiving? Are they willing to work with people to say, hey, we understand it. Do they set up a payment program? Mm -hmm. Or I'm assuming they don't just cut you off and say that's that's the end of your... Well, if, if they could if they wanted to, but they are very generous with their payment plans, especially with the uh, discount rate in folks. So if you're coming into April, you're a client, and you have an arrearage of over $300 still from the past winter, there's something, it's uh, it's also called AMP, which is different than Brian's program. Brian's AMP is different. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's the rearage management program. So what the National Grid does is they take your 12 months of billing, divide by 12, and that's your monthly payment if you come into this payment plan. So as long as you make that payment, they will forgive a portion of the arrearage. And you can have thousands of dollars in arrearages. There's a lot of reasons you may have it because there's different protections. There's medical protections and... Uh, children under one so you could have a significantly high bill and they'll forgive up to four thousand dollars a year off that bill until that arrearage is totally gone totally forgiven so wow and we also partner up with different uh like catholic charities or uh, our co-workers at main street action there's other funds that could potentially be available to help people catch up or do a down payment on a conventional payment plan because the, the AMP, the arrearage management plan, is like a once-in-a-lifetime sort of thing as of right now. Um, that could change, but it's like you get a one-shot on it. So we want to um, make sure people succeed. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> okay, and, and as far as, um, so the money, the money comes <laughs> from HHS on your side. Mm -hmm. How about you, Brian? Uh, most of the funding that we leverage for, for weatherization comes from the utility, from the public utility, investor-owned utility, national grid in our case. Um, about, we get mm, about 
five and a half, 550K a year for heart WAP and DOE WAP uh, from the federal government, and then we get 50 million plus from, from National Grid to spread over our program. Now you, um, I found I found the heart WAP, but what's the other one? The 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 other one's just conventional WAP, weatherization assistance okay. program. That's for weatherizing the home, the Insula whole, right. insulation, air sealing, uh, minor heat waste. Okay. And then the heart WAP is, the is strictly for, is strictly for for heating systems. The furnace yes. or whatever. The furnace and yeah. the boiler. Yep. I gotcha. All right. So so that's kind of interesting that your side. So there's no or really little state funding, if any, or no, no state federal funding. Or federal no state funding. Fund. Have 550k in federal funding, give or take. Wow. Wow. I thought that that would be the greater. <laughs> You'd think that you know. I will say that the 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 federal the federal program is a good one. It's been around for quite some time. I believe it began in 1977, mm -hmm. and. Um, and it, it, uh, the utility program is modeled off of the federal program because of the standards and protocols that the DOE demands. So the utility programs follow suit with that to make sure that we, are, we, we, have a, we hold ourselves to a very high standard of quality installation and, um, and cert certifications and whatnot, professional, professional credentials for, for our auditors, for our assessors. So with your side of the program, um, do you go Obviously, you're doing standalones, apartments. Um, are you involved in other aspects of the community as well, like um, senior housing, mm -hmm. that kind of thing? Absolutely. So uh, that falls into the multifamily bracket, where we, we handle uh, a facility would be, is defined as five units or, or greater. Mm -hmm. Now, that could be a five-unit standalone apartment building. That could be one building with 100 units in it. Or it could be 50 duplexes on a subsite. Um, a lot of our work, probably 35, 40 percent of our multifamily work, is public housing. Um, we've worked with the Gloucester Housing Authority here in town, mm -hmm. uh, all the surrounding housing authorities. Um, it'd be easy to tell you which ones we haven't worked with, which are <laughs> very few and far between. Um, and usually, if that's a, in a place where, where they're an electric municipality um, and they don't have gas heat. Um, that that's pretty much the only occasion. And I'm assuming uh, I'm assuming that you probably handle municipal buildings, that kind of thing, for the city as well. Uh, no, no, only only, hmm. only uh, so low-income family housing. Um, it, it's it's income eligible, but it has to be housing, except on a case-by-case -case basis. We'll uh, we'll handle uh, we'll handle buildings that deal with the with with income eligible communities. So uh, places like a Head Start. Or a pantry, or a shelter, places like that. Interesting, huh? That's really that's really something. So you really you really blanketing the city. Absolutely, absolutely. That's really something. The utility does have other programs to handle to handle municipal buildings, places like uh, hospitals or libraries. They mm -hmm. have a commercial and industrial program. Places and but that's not through action, right? That's not through no. action. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. So let's see, where were we? We were talking about um, the funding. We talked about funding. And so this year, you just, I think they just passed, they just did the omnibus. And what did that mean for action as far as funding? Um, I think you said like 50. We, we, got, we got a funding increase. So uh, nationwide uh, WAP and LIHEAP which is the fuel assistance program, got a, got a funding increase. Um, the increase was, you know, small but significant for us, you know, nationwide, and um, the DHCD in town, Department of Housing and Community Development, mm -hmm. which, which allocates our budgets, will have to make some adjustments up slightly. So we'll get some more money this year, so we'll be able to do some more good for folks in the community. That's great. That is, that is just wonderful to hear. Because I know that um, there was a a little uh, period of nervousness where uh, a yes, certain indeed. someone wanted to you know cut funding for the program, and I thought, whoa, <laughs> whoa. So, uh, but I'm glad that I'm glad that uh, you know you got your increase, and and it just goes to help so many people 
it that does. it's amazing work. Um, is there anything? Um, is there anything that we could do as citizens of this community to help? Um, I again, I, I I just I keep going to this past this past winter because it was just so brutal, and I'm so glad it's almost over. Where people needed extra funding, where you guys needed extra funding this year. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that we could do as citizens of the community to help make that happen? Um, Would you like to take well, this one? <laughs> well, it, it's uh, a lot about uh, people staying in touch with their political representatives and sure. awareness of our programs, like talk about our programs and the mm -hmm. impact we have on our communities. You know, talk us up that it, it's important that we stay around. Um, friends, neighbors, and we're always welcoming people to come speak with us, whether they walk in or call, you know, to talk about our programs and actions, other programs that, you know, the, these CAP agencies, community action programs are, are imperatives to our society. So it's mostly just, um, you know, getting out there, getting awareness. We do a lot of outreach to try to let the communities know we're here. This is what we do. It's important. Sure. Um, and that's the biggest thing. And just watching, you, you know, who you're voting and the political environment, keeping in touch. Sure. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, I know Anne Margaret is be definitely behind this program. She, she's she wonderful. is, yeah. she's wonderful. We love her. Uh, Seth Moulton, Seth Moulton's office. Yeah, that mm -hmm. would be yeah. the congress congressional district. Uh, for us is Seth Moulton's office and our senators would be Warren Senator and... Senator Tarr is very... Yeah, State Senator, yeah. State, State Senator, Senator. Tarr. So <coughs> we could uh, make those phone calls, folks, and make sure that uh, Action Energy sticks around yeah. because they do a lot for our community, as you've heard. So my name is Bernadette. Thank you for watching. And have a good night. <laughs>